Best underrated steak, I think, in, uh, in Chicago. I think they're awesome. All right, Matt Hayes is in New York. He joins us now uh, on Skype as well. Hi, Matt. How are you? Hey, Matt. Good morning, gentlemen. How are you? Good. Terrific. What were your thoughts on yesterday's game? Well, let's see. You have a quarterback that wasn't performing that everyone was complaining about by the end. You have a, a Browns loss from a game that they could have won, and the Steelers won and are no longer winless. I mean, it's like the glory days of Browns football are back, isn't it? This is how it's actually <laughs> supposed to be. That whole wonderful, we're winning, everything is wonderful and great, like, Twilight Zone thing. That was just a fluke. This is how it's supposed to be on Monday where we're yelling and screaming and complaining. And guess what, Andy? I know you're going to love this. You know what starts up again today? Then everyone starts talking about the draft next year oh, again after a great. loss like this. It's <laughs> wonderful. It's like everything is back to normal. So, what'd you think of Teddy Bridgewater over the weekend? That's what it's all going to be. <laughs> That's all we're going to talk about again because the draft is. How many days still spring training? Oh, wait, the Cavaliers also start this week, too, right? <laughs> Let's start all the countdown. When did the Gladiators start? Or do they start already? Uh, what well, is the Gladiators like or the other team? What's the women's team? Oh, the lingerie football The lingerie football I have no idea what the name of that team is. Are they, that, are they still here? I don't know. The Gladiators. Sure, whatever. Yeah, why Can I talk about a story? Speaking of, you said Cheesecake Factory yes. uh, a few minutes ago. I have a story, actually, that's kind of funny I thought you guys may appreciate. Sure Yesterday, I was actually there for brunch, um, since you mentioned the name. And I was sitting at the bar. And this really nice couple walk in and then sit right next to me. And they look at the bartender, point up to the television and say, yeah, you see that football game that's up on the TV there? We have tickets for that. We thought it started later. So we're running a little late. It's already about 10 minutes into the first quarter at this point. But we're going to sit here and have uh, a drink and have some lunch. And then we'll eventually make it down to the game. There should be some sort of rule or, or some sort of vetting process that where you get tickets, you actually show you are going to show up and actually make an effort to get down there. Because if it was a theater ticket, the guy wouldn't be looking at his girl and saying, you know what, uh, the, it, start, it already started. I thought it started later. Instead of actually rushing down to get there and start watching it, here's what we're going to do. We're going to go grab lunch. And let me tell you how the first wow. act goes. Yeah. So there's this really rich woman who's married, and she meets this – really poor guy at the bottom of the boat. They fall in love and all that. And then by the time we get there at intermission, it'll be the good part anyway, because then the boat hits the iceberg and the ship sinks and she lives and he dies. And then the crazy lady throws the jewels into the ocean at the end of it. And that's how Titanic works. So it'll be just fine. You don't do that for theater. If you have sports tickets and you're running late, show up and go anyway. You don't just sit there at a restaurant and well, we'll get there eventually. You have tickets, you pay good money, just go. How far away were they from, from the stadium, Matt? They were probably about 30 or so minutes away, and by the time they got down, their traffic would have been a little less worse, so I'd be shocked if they got there by, like, halfway through the fourth quarter. Those are not true sports fans. You should have just took the guy and slapped him in the back of the head, did the old, the old back of the head, the old Gibbs to the back of the head. <laughs> and the crazy part was they're both sports people. You can tell they work out, and they were even talking about how they play sports, and they like going to sports, and it's not like it was a generic term. It didn't sound like that, hey, we're diehard Jets fans or anything like that. It was, we just like sports. So we're going to go. You pay good money for those tickets. And if I was her, I would be kind of slightly a little ticked off. And I should have gotten their number and found out if they were still together a week or two later. Because <laughs> that could be a last straw for some people, I think. Hey, Matt, what did you think of the quail, that little duck that Brandon Whedon threw uh, underhand at the end of the game there yesterday? Um, interesting, unique, and <laughs> something different. Why not? <laughs> That's a pretty good breakdown right different, there. Sure. <laughs> Interesting, unique, something different. Oh, it doesn't yes. get any deeper. You can tell than I that. speak football terminology, and I played in high school, can't you? Absolutely. It's, it's all good. <laughs> all right. Well, I want you to have a great day today. Any other uh, uh, tidbits of wisdom for us? Um, I, I think just stay positive and let's just keep the fun flow of over the last couple of weeks going. Why get all negative about? Yesterday's game, yeah, we didn't didn't look we didn't look like we didn't by the end of it. But at the beginning, there was some hope and all that, and that's who we have to deal with right now. It's kind of like getting married to someone, and you're stuck with them after kids after 20 years. You know what? We're stuck with them for a while. Let's enjoy it and make do with what we can, guys. All right, thank you very much. This is, you know, you, that was good material test on us, though, wasn't it? Especially the couple in the bar that had tickets. That's good material test, is it not?
it, it was a slight good material test and true. And quite honestly, I haven't told that story to anybody. And I really did need to let it out because I was sitting there rolling my eyes at him going, get out of the bar and go to the game. I was seriously not happy. with. I felt bad for her. I felt so bad for her. That's awesome stuff. All right, Matt. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks, Matt. Make sure Thanks, you guys. follow him on Twitter, too. He is outstanding. That's Matt Hayes. Oh, funny guy. H-A-Z-E. H-A-Z-E. Make sure you follow him on Twitter. All right, uh, Eric, the Wonder Boy. By the way, if you want to get involved in the show, 216-431-3820. I just called him Eric the Wonder Boy. I meant Eric the referee. 216-431-3820 or Skype in at Dogs on the Run. And, uh, boy, he's got a lot of stuff going on over there, don't you, Eric the referee? He does. He's, he's, he's working. Um, we got Kenny Rhoda ready to talk. Um, we got people Skyping in. A so, uh, we'll, couple phone calls? Yeah, we'll, we'll go to Kenny first. Hey, do we have, I hear, rumor has it we have a new feature coming up here. We do. We We're do. going to the deli? We are at Huron's Deli. Oh, um, I'm watching. Sneak peek in there. Yeah, there's a little sneak peek. Does that make you hungry? Right you'll get a little oh, sneak peek. Oh, you know, you'll do a, a double starving. order of bacon in there. Oh, look at that. <laughs> oh, I'm starving. Man. I am so. Oh, oh that looks good. wow. Uh, are we going to be Smell able to talk to anybody over there, or what are we going to do? We're just going to check it out. We will be able to talk. We're uh, got a cook ready to talk Browns. Oh. Okay, good. We're going to talk to the cook here in a second. Looks like they're getting busier yeah. too. So that place is awesome, by the way. All right, way. let's uh, let's go back to Kenny Rota. Let's talk to Kenny Rota real quick. All right, Kenny, welcome back to the show. Always a pleasure to have you back on. I got the headset working this time now. Yeah. Look at that. I, I MacGyvered it up. It's working now, guys. <laughs> All right, let me uh, let me read this question that we got from LD down in Cincinnati. Uh, LD says, "How can you play, blame the defense when they were on the field for most of the second half?" Well, your job as a defender, whether you play 20, 25, 30, or 35 minutes, is to stop the opposition. That's the bottom line. You did it in the first half. Why couldn't you do it in the second half? Uh, the offense isn't going to score every time they have the football. They aren't the Denver Broncos. So your job as a defender, as a unit, as a defensive coordinator, is to find a way to make adjustments to stop the opposing team's offense, well, whether you're on the, the field for the entire second half or just half of the second half, and they didn't do that yesterday. So I, I don't buy that excuse. This isn't game 14, 15, or 16 where it's been a long season. This is game number six. Kenny, you know, and I hate to talk about officiating, but let's go back to some of those calls yesterday, whether it was the Greg Little call on the sideline, the P.I. to Joe Hayden, the first P.I., which set up a touchdown, uh, in essence, the uh, roughing the quarterback. I mean, I, I, first of all, I, I, I'm going to preface it again. I hate to complain about officiating, but this is a, these are calls going against the home team, and, man, some of these were just absolutely horrible. Well, here's the thing. On the little catch, had they called it a catch and reviewed it, they wouldn't have been able to overturn it. So the key there was what was the call on the field. And unfortunately, uh, the call, even though they debated about it, they didn't make the call right away. Uh, it was about uh, the, the call on the field, and they called it an incomplete pass. So they couldn't overturn that. Uh, the Hayden, Joe gets uh, away with a lot. Let, let's be honest. He grabs that with that backhand that you try and hide from the official uh, he gets uh, away with that a lot. So, uh, yeah, that was questionable, too. But the one that bothered me was the, the roughing the passer call. I thought that was a BS call. I thought that was terrible. Uh, he didn't, uh, you know, try and plant him six feet into the ground. He kind of let up uh, a little bit. That's the one that bothered me uh, the most out of all, all three of those bad calls. Uh, Kenny, I don't know. I, it's just my, the big question I have is what do you do a quarterback? You've got two quarterbacks here, and I, I don't know what direction you can go in. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I just don't know. I mean, I really, that's exactly how I feel about Let's the hope they do, team. Andy, right? Because uh, you, me, Mike, uh, uh, what we say really doesn't matter. They've proven that in the, the past. Uh, Mike Lombardi, Joe Banner, Dr. No, and Mr. Freeze, uh, they do their own thing. So <laughs> it's up to them. And uh, right now, you, you don't have many options. I think last week we talked about the list of guys uh, that were available. There's nobody that really jumps off that list and, and screams starting quarterback in the National Football League. Maybe Vince Young if you, you want to go in a different direction because uh, this is a guy that started a lot of games and has a decent winning percentage uh, you know, as a starting quarterback, but he's out of the league for a reason. So mm -hmm. uh, right now I, I think you go with Brandon Whedon and, and you look back at this and the film study and say you can't do this. Manage the game. That's what we need you to do. Manage the football game. You don't have to be Peyton Manning. You don't have to be Andrew Luck from your draft class. You just manage uh, the, the football game 
and uh, well, he wasn't in the same draft class as Andrew Luck, my bad, but uh, just go out there and don't turn the football over. The biggest statistic, I think, for Brandon Whedon is the turnovers. Don't fumble it. Don't throw interceptions. Live to play another down and let your defense, which is supposed to be the strength of this team right now, go out there and try and get you the ball back in better field position. Kenny, the, from the staying with the quarterback, if they went from Brian Hoyer to Brandon Whedon and the playbook shrunk, if they go from Brandon Whedon to Jason Campbell, does the playbook shrink even more? Does it stay the same? Are they able to add more to it? What's your take? I, I think it stays about the same. I don't know if they can add much more to it uh, with Jason Campbell. Think about it, guys. They brought in Jason Campbell to be the backup, and then they add Brian Hoyer, who was without a team, was a third-string quarterback, and when the opportunity presented itself for Jason Campbell to start, they didn't start him. Mm -hmm. Leapfrog. Brian Hoyer went ahead of him. So that tells me that they, they don't like what they see with Jason Campbell, regardless of how many plays they may use with him. So uh, you may try it. You may go with it. But if you remember, he came in uh, in the, the second half of that, that one oh. game, and, and he was just awful. Horrible. He was terrible, and that's probably why they went with Hoyer. So your options right now at quarterback are, are not uh, very good, and Brandon Wheaton is probably the best option of the two, and that's not saying much. All right, Kenny, we're going to check back in with you in the next half hour as well. We've got plenty more we want to talk to you about, so we'll come back to you in a little bit. Thank you very much, Kenny. Appreciate it. Not a problem. Order me a bacon, egg, and cheese sandwich when you talk to those guys, all right? <laughs> okay. Oh, that's good stuff. All right, that's what we're doing next. Uh, the phone lines are packed right now. We've got one open line if you want to hit them. 216-431-3820. 216-431-3820. If you're on hold, hang on there. We'll get to you in just a second. If you want to Skype in, it's dogs on the run. Little new segment we're going to do now. We're going to go to Huron Road Deli. That's what I want to do. Oh, Is yeah. We're doing? No, we're not no, going we're there. Not going to Wow. Nah, he was Air, well, we Eric, waved you off. Know, you said frantically waved off. The referee, why are we waving this off? What's the problem here? We're not ready yet. We're waiting. They're getting ready. Getting, getting ready? ready? Here, I'll give you a preview. This is getting ready. They're making food in there. That, how much more of a. He's got his ISP in. He's ready to go. Rick, can you hear me? Rick, can you hear us? Okay, if you can't hear us, but listen, what, listen, listen. Oh, <laughs> he threw a flag you on me. On listen the flag. to the referee. You made two good flag tosses, and they have not been on camera. All right. Oh, I got that was outstanding. He did. It was a pretty good one. Hit me. Listen in the head. to your referee. <laughs> All right, referee. We're good. All right, we'll go to here on Road in just a minute. We got, we got Skype for Joe. Oh, that thing's stuck. <laughs> <laughs> I wish we had another camera. The the, the flag was... got stuck on the back of a monitor. They. Built this little monitor wall over there, but you can't tell one of driving. Those. Listen, 216 431 3820 or Dogs on the Run on Skype. We'll do that in a second. Phone lines, I do have one line open for you. Uh, Jason in Charlotte, North Carolina has been on hold. Hi, Jason. How are you today? Pretty good. How are you guys doing? Good. What'd you think of that game yesterday? Uh, obviously, you can't like what you've seen from Brandon Whedon, but as a lifelong Browns fan, I think that. You know, what they bring defensively and, you know, some of the possibilities where they could be offensively with the centerpiece to that, obviously, you got to be pretty excited, in my opinion. Jason, are you part of the Browns backers there in Carolina? Do you go to a bar with Browns fans and watch a game? Uh, I get two youngsters, so I don't get to make it out as much as I'd like to, but uh, I have been uh, years past before kids and whatnot, but uh, I have a group of uh, friends down here that uh, – from Northeast Ohio, so we usually have a little get together that we uh, have our own little troop here. What's their take then on on Brandon Whedon? Is it is it getting tougher to, to stick behind the kid, or because that's basically it looks like all the team has right now? You got to be in, you got to be on that bandwagon whether you like it or not. Yeah, I think you got to be on it. I, I think it's you know Hoyer brought a little spark that you know he's sort of seen a glimpse of. You know what this could be, and I think it's a, a driven league for quarterbacks to, you know, if you don't have a centerpiece, you're sort of waiting for the next year to come around. That's what I was sort of calling guys for, with the multiple picks that that we have. And I know, and I can't remember where I heard this initially, and it may have been, you know, one of the the newspaper publications up that way, or if it was online. But I did hear somebody mention this at one point in time. How crazy would it be with all the picks that we do have? And, you know, the, the sort of spectrum of, you know, Teddy Bridgewater being the first quarterback and, you know, who knows how far that goes back from Johnny Manziel. 
What what's the I mean, do you do you cover all your bases and take two quarterbacks in this draft as bad <laughs> off as we are? <laughs> you know, well, I mean that, you know, Washington did it. Washington did it yeah, with they RG3. Did with Kirk and Cousins so, and RG three. Yeah. And now everybody thinks Kirk Good Cousins point. is this hot commodity and if I'd I take him I'm right watching now. last night. Yeah, but you take him, but if I'm watching, I'm not giving him up. No, not. There's no way. Now, the way RG3's been playing, and, and, you know, if he's hurt, I don't think you can do that. But it's a good question, Jason. Um, I, I don't know that I would take two quarterbacks next year. And, Jason, thank you for the call from North Carolina. I just don't know that that's the situation they need to be in, especially if Brian Hoyer is healthy next year. If Hoyer is healthy, there's no reason to do that. I don't even know that he's a starting quarterback, but I think that in his two games, he has committed himself to at least having some kind of long-term role on this team. I think he's your starting quarterback, and then you go out and draft a quarterback, and there's a there's a – you know, at this point, there's a chance that Brandon Whedon could not even be with this team next year. If, if, it, if everything goes in that direction and Hoyer comes back healthy, the, with what you saw of him, even in just a limited amount of time, Andy, you got to give that guy a chance to be your starting quarterback from day one, don't you, going into training camp? You have to give him a chance. you got to see how healthy he is, though.